Did you know that misconfigured Docker containers are really easy to hack? In fact, I'll show you two simple ways you can escape Docker containers that you can even do locally with Docker Desktop. Don't get me wrong, Docker is great for deploying applications in containers that isolate processes, files, and networking from the host kernel. But there are still ways to escape or hack your way out of a container's default isolation. And I'm going to show you how, but you can also hack the YouTube algorithm by hitting the subscribe button. So here I have a Docker Compose file with a bun app service, an Nginx service, and a vector service. And Vector is using the Docker socket to get logs from the Nginx container. Quick pause, if you want to know why the Docker Compose file is set up the way it is, then check out this video. The link for it should be in the description. And this project also has a .env file with a bunch of fake secrets. Let's go through how an attacker can get access to the environment variables file all through the Docker socket. Let's check the running containers with Docker PS and we'll access the vector container with bash. We can run this command to check if the container has a package manager and we can see it has one. So we can first run update and then install Docker. This should give us access to the Docker command, which means if we run Docker PS, because of the Docker socket, we can see all the containers running on the host machine. So what can we do from here? We can run this command, which is going to run a command in a new container in interactive mode with a privileged flag, which disables most of Docker's security. We'll talk more about this later. Then we'll create a volume to add all the host files to a file in the container called hosts root. We'll create a new Alpine container and change the root to our hosts root folder. Then we'll execute the base6 shell. So essentially, we're running a container inside another container. So if I list all the files, you'll see that a bunch of these match what I have on my host machine. So applications, library, system, users, volumes, and so on. Which means if I change directory to users, my users directory, and the folder with the project, then it should take me straight there. And if I reveal all the files, I can have access to my environment variables, and I can view them like this. Because the Docker socket is the API endpoint to the Docker daemon running on the host system, mounting it to a container can give it access to the host. So instead of using Docker socket as a volume, you could mount the Nginx logs to the host and pass just that in as a volume to vector. But if you really need to use these sockets, then you can check out Docker socket proxy, which is a security enhanced proxy for the Docker socket. So in this compose file, I replaced the vector service with C advisor to get metrics from my containers. And it has privileged access to collect these metrics from the host resources. Yes, there's also access to the Docker socket, but for this example, we're going to pretend it doesn't exist. Let's first run through what you can do without privileged mode. Let's first get shell access to our C advisor container. Then we're going to add cap sh to view our capabilities. And we can see that these are the capabilities that processes have access to and the exclamation mark shows the capabilities that processes don't have access to. So basically, we don't have access to a lot, especially the ones with admin. Now let's enable privileged mode. And now if we view our capabilities, you can see that processes have access to all the capabilities. Let's make a host directory in the mount folder, and then we can do a recursive bind mount to mount everything in the host directory to our new directory that we've created. This is something we can only do with the sysadmin capability. This means that we can change directory and view all the containers on our host machine. We could go into those containers and view information about them. We could also do the same with volumes. But worst of all, we have access to the Docker socket, which means we can install Docker and use this socket to access all the host files the same way we did before. One way to prevent this is to install C Advisor on the host machine instead of installing it with Docker. We could also use a different way to get metrics, like using Prometheus with the node and container exporter. But if we wanted to use C Advisor with Docker, we could remove the privileged flag and instead add specific capabilities, which is a good start. But even this approach isn't entirely secure because with sysadmin, you can modify kernel parameters and use the mount command. And with sysptrace, you can inject code into host processes. So we could also add a security option with a secure computing mode JSON file, which restricts the amount of options. But if that sounds like a lot of work, then you can install Gvisor, which provides a strong layer of isolation by mediating calls before they reach the host kernel. And also run the Docker bench for security script to check for common best practices. Anyway, 
be sure to share this with a friend, a work colleague, and let's work on keeping our containers more secure.